But that's not what I'm talking about. But I mean that the reason you are alive, full of vigor, full of sap, and ready to take on the challenges of the new year, is because Jesus leaves. Amen. Your Redeemer leaves. And because of that, I'm wondering, how many of you are excited about the new year? So, some of you, some of you, you're, some of you are so excited about the new year, you're ready to, to just yank off the, the wig in front of the person. Oh, no. I'm so excited about what God has ahead of us in 2011. Last week, we were doing the anointing service. Church was packed. And, and people were lining up to get their heads anointed with oil. And right here, I was standing here, and a young girl, 18-year-old girl, I was praying over her, and she said, Pastor, I'd like to know more about how I can become a Christian and give my life to the Lord. Hallelujah. I was sharing that on Wednesday. Right here, as we were anointing head, a soul was being saved. Yeah. I can't wait to see what God has planned for us in this church, in this year of rebuilding. This week, I was listening to 680 News. And I was, as I was listening, I heard that a poll was taken on the Canadians' view of the future. Do you know what the result of the poll was? Only 39% were optimistic about the future, that it's going to be a new year. Only 39. 61% didn't think it was going to be a good year. Doesn't that sound gloomy? <laughs> but church, the reason we are excited about a brand new year is because Jesus is Lord and he, we serve a God who will never fail. If you believe that, give the Lord a best praise. We serve a God who will never fail. Come hell or high water. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Oh, I'm so excited. We serve a God who can never fail. I don't care what Paul is saying. I care about what my God and the word of God is saying. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, we're glad you're here this morning as we continue in our mini series. New Year Boosters. Last Sunday I shared with you on how you can beat the odds in 2011. I, I tell you that was that was some message. That was, that was a good message. I'm going to get me a CD of that message and listen to it. You, you got, if you went here, you got to go get That's a message. That's a copy of a message everyone here needs to get for the year. Because the Philistines will come at you as they did Shamga. And if you don't know what to do, you get beat. But praise God, now you do know what to do. Because we've empowered you on how you can beat the odds in 2011. Turn to your neighbor and say, you can beat the odds. And the essence of beating the odds, really, as I shared with you last week, is understanding that now is a time to begin to rebuild whatever needs to be built in your life. And in the life of this church for the glory of God. Because there's no time like the present. Let me show you something as we move into the message this morning. Turn to Hebrews chapter 11 in your Bible. Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to wait for you till you, so you can get there and everybody can get there and I can get there too. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. 
If you dare say amen. amen. Hebrews chapter 11. What's the first word? I, I can't hear you, church. What's the first word? Now. Right away, the writer of Hebrews is telling us something. What is he telling us? He is saying, you have to get into the now moment. You have to get into the now moment. Not in the yesterday. Not in the 2020 stuff. In the sweet by and by. Because if you never get into the now, then you have nothing really to believe for for the tomorrow. Come on now, who is this message already helping? See, see, the power of now is that something inside of you that swells up, that something inside of you that says, there's much more in me that I'm already seeing. The power of now is that something in you that is saying, there's much more I can build in my life. There's much more I can do for God. And there's so much more that is yet to be done and yet to be seen. Because the past is still yet to come. Amen. Now! Everybody say now. now. I have to say I was not one of those brilliant, uh, brainy student back in my school days. Uh, I was one of those who wished and prayed that the dog ate my report card before my parents got home from work. <laughs> and anybody here too? <laughs> My twin sister, on the other hand, my twin sister, I do have a twin sister. My twin sister, on the other hand, uh, 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 she, 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 she gets all A's on her report card. A's. My report card, on the other hand, has got varieties. <laughs> varieties of alphabets. You know what I'm saying? You got the D's and the, you got the F's and the E's. Most, mostly E's and F's. And when you, you see, my, 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 my sister's report card was so boring. So boring. You know, who wants to just see all the A's? You know, well, you know what, I'm what I'm talking about? But when you see, see, see that God created alphabets, you know, D and E and E follow F, that's my report card. I even repeated, I even repeated the fourth grade. Here they don't hold kids back anymore, but back in Africa, <laughs> education is different. If you don't pass, you don't go. Yeah. <laughs> I was held back for one year. I'll never forget that experience. All my peers, including my twin sister, they will move them up to the next class. And, and you know, back in Nigeria then, the, the higher grade you go, the higher you go in the story building. The little kids they put in the lower building, and then the great, the big kids they put them right, right. They put them in the high building, in the high story. And I could never forget that day, as they were going from grade four to five, and I had to stay in my grade, and they walked them all up the stairs, and I couldn't go that stairs. I, I, I used to hate award days. You know those award days. You know they can mess you up. You know, those are what they They can mess you up. A anybody in here know what I'm talking about? You see everybody else getting all the academic awards in science, this award in math, this award in English. And your friends, they're strutting up the stage, you know? They're strutting up the stage to receive the awards and, and, and shoulders straight and head up. And I'm sitting in my seat chilling. I'm sitting there chilling, going, whatever. Yeah, whatever. No, no. I, <laughs> my name not being called for nothing. But my friends, they're running down the stage. 
you know, running toward their mama, showing their mama three or four certificates I received. But in one moment, in one moment, everybody say in one moment, I made a decision that I was going to get me a certificate at the next awards day. So, so I decided I was going to study hard so, so I can get me an award. And I made a decision to get perfect attendance. <laughs> <laughs> N- next awards day, next awards day, I got me the perfect attendance award. I even practiced how I was going to go up there, you know, to get my perfect attendance award. You, you know, you know, you know, you know. I, I, I even, I even, I even, I even practiced how surprised I was going to get. You know, I sat down there. Uh, I sat down there. Uh, Taiwo Adamala Adababoye, perfect attendance award. Who me? <laughs> I, now, 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 you're going, you're going. So, 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 isn't that a big deal? Isn't that a big deal? No, no, to you, it may not be a big deal, but to me, all that helped me to see something. That I was there. I was present. Why? Because you don't get nothing. You don't go nowhere. If you're not present in the now. Everybody say now. Now. If you don't show up in the today. If you don't show up in the now. You won't be where you need to be in the tomorrow. If you want God to show up. If you want God to show up. You got to show up yourself. And since that day, since that day I made up my mind to to start from where I was, things started to get better for me academically. But if I never considered that there is no time like now, there's no time like now to turn things around in my life, I wouldn't be where I am today with all the degrees after my name. So I don't care how messed up your past has been. It doesn't even matter where you started. Oh, glory to God. I stop by to announce to you this second Sunday of the new year. If you make up your, your mind, believing that there's no time like now, no time like the present, your God is God a finish for you that is much more better than whatever your past has been. If you believe that, give the Lord a mighty praise this morning. Amen. Tell your neighbor now. Now what? Just how is it that some people are able to stick with it when the odds are stacked against them? Instead of quitting, they excel. (laughs) Instead of breaking down, (laughs) they rise up to the occasion like Shamga. You all remember the guy Shamga last week? The guy that beat 600 Philistines with one us God. Am I sensing then that I still have some Shamgas in the house this morning? Do I still have some Shamgas in the house this morning who are ready to move forward with God in 2011? If I do. Verse 1 of Hebrews chapter 11 kind of set the stage for us for where I'm led to go this morning which is the 12th chapter 